a huge warm welcome to everyone watching on for our first 2023 Sisterhood Lounge Room. We are so happy you could join us. Hope you had the most fabulous Christmas, eating all the Christmas food, having family time, all those wonderful things that you get to do around Christmas. And here we are in a new year. So when we are starting a new year, there's so many different things that we could talk about, but I'm really excited because I truly believe this topic could transform our 2023. We're talking about living by the spirit. And you know, this year, 2023, there is a lot ahead of us. Hopefully some fun times, mountaintops, joy, fun, all of those amazing things. But we also know that years sometimes have unexpected. They have maybe some ups and downs and situations we didn't see coming, or even just those challenges that we have to overcome. But I love as Christians that we have the opportunity to have this assurance that we do not do it on our own, firstly, but also we have a God who's gone before us. There is no surprises to him. And this whole idea of living by the Spirit, in fact, Romans 8, some homework for you girls. Read the whole chapter, it's incredible. It's basically a chapter about living with the Spirit of God. And the Word of God, it tells us to not live by the flesh, which ultimately lives means living by our own thoughts, our own desires, our own humanity, but living and walking by the Spirit of God. And this can be something that in church life we talk about a lot, the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit, being filled by the Spirit, receiving the Spirit, baptism of the Spirit, all of these things. And unless we actually unpack what does that mean, how do we do this, it can be really something we talk about but we don't actually live. And I, I truly do believe that if we do understand this revelation of being filled, empowered, equipped by the Spirit of God, ultimately we're walking with God himself in yeah. intimacy and relationship with him, but also we're walking in his will. We're walking in the, his power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. So anything that we can face, he will turn all things together for good when we do that. And so I, I truly believe that this topic we're gonna discuss today that it can be a catalyst to revolutionize our 2023, that we will see God in the midst of everything that we are a part of. And it's a really good start Amen. to the year. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to unpack this with these beautiful girls with me. So I'm just gonna really quickly introduce them. First of all, we have Nora, mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. Nora on team here. <laughs> You've got a music degree, you love everything worship. You yeah. are a phenomenal anointed worship leader. Yes. Um, it's yeah. so beautiful. You also, Grew up in Colombia, yes. so Spanish is your first language. Yes. Now, do you think in Spanish still or? Sometimes. Sometimes? sometimes. <laughs> Good question. Because <laughs> I always, I th think about that sometimes, so you're translating in your head or, um, yeah, that's a lot, but mm -hmm. you, you, it's beautiful. <laughs> love that. Um, and one unknown fact about you is you love cats and you. I love cats, yes. Really? Yeah, I, like, I didn't grow up with cats. Yeah? But. At the end of the day, like it was by accident. A friend of mine just gave me one. Yeah. I ended up loving them and my family <laughs> got into it. So now my whole family has cats. So there you I'm go. a cat lover. I love that. <laughs> and also we have Julie, very known and loved, been on here many times. But there's some new things that happened for you. Both of your daughters, V and India, are now out of the nest. They are. At university. Are. So excited for them to come home for Christmas. I am so excited. I was so excited. <laughs> it was so good to have I know, them. it must be so weird, mum with kids gone, but then they get to come home. Exactly. My yeah. brother says they're like a boomerang. Because <laughs> you throw them and then, boop, they're back before you know. With all their washing. <laughs> with all their washing. <laughs> so good. And obviously finished your master's, but then straight back to studying. What are you studying right now? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, but it's right for me, yeah. it's the time for me. I'm just a very late bloomer. That's no, all. you're amazing. Uh, 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 integrative coaching and counseling. So it's giving me the framework for, you know, psychology and counseling. The other one gave me the framework for theology. Wow. I feel very grateful. I feel very amazing. grateful that I'm getting to, I'm <laughs> loving it. So loving good, it. so wonderful. And then my beautiful friend, Swan. Um, I've got to know and love you. We live like five minutes from each other. Yes, we do. We're constantly on school run. Yes. Like we do at, see each other. On our, at the moment with our hats and massive coats oh, and everything. You always look amazing. <laughs> I'm always in gym gear, but she looks amazing. <laughs> but you have three kids. Yes, I do. Yes, married to Ash. Yes. Very in love. I love you guys. Yes, we are. <laughs> Obviously. That's so good. You are Malaysian Indian though. Yes, yeah. And um, grew up as a Hindu. Yes, I did. I grew up as a Hindu. Um, 
I came to Christ when I was 16 years old. A bit of a dramatic conver <laughs> conversion, mm -hmm. but um, my life's completely changed since. And, and you um, ooze Jesus. Yes, <laughs> you really do. Even just like your face just is glowing with Jesus. Um, well, I and it figures because I met my husband in Hillsong. So, uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, I guess you did. Well, yeah. And you've been part of Hillsong for a really long time, yeah. but also an incredible cook. Yes. And love hospitality and having people over in your home and yes. just a really good friend. So I love that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we're going to talk about living by the spirit. And so I'm going to start with you first, Swan, because obviously with your upbringing, uh, being a Hindu, you're very probably aware of the spiritual world. Yeah. So with your upbringing, just growing up that way, what was maybe some of the importance to you coming into Christianity and yeah. finding Jesus of understanding this living by the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit of God? Um, good question. Um, I think firstly, um, the Word of God has just been my compass because yeah. there is just an unmoving truth in that. I'm just going to read one verse yeah. and then sort of like lead into that. So the verse that I love is God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Beautiful. Um, I think if you believe God's word is the truth, then God is spirit. Yeah. Um, but growing up Hindu, um, the spiritual world was very, very real to us. My family were very devout Hindus and um, we um, regularly had puja and we um, prayed every evening and, um, and we went to temple every week. So the spiritual world in that was very real. So a lot of my um, relatives and friends would often um, manifest into Hindu gods wow. um, and the spirits will enter them and they will transform completely into someone different mm -hmm. um, and have full on manifestation of these gods. Um, so, and when we go to puja and to temple as well, um, there were healings that would take place. Mm -hmm. um, there were fortunes that were being asked and then granted. So it was very, very real. Um, mm -hmm. But what really stuck with me was um, these healings and these fortunes, they don't last very long. Yeah. And after that manifestation has taken place, there's a complete emptiness afterwards. Yeah. So it made me question quite a lot. Is this God real? Yeah. You know, um, is this the, re the, the right way? Um, um, but a few years later, thankfully, there's a story for another day because it's a long one. Um, I um, uh, came to Christ when I was 16. And I just remember the first time I um, experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And it was very different mm -hmm. because it has not gone away. Wow. And um, it is constant. Mm -hmm. My eyes suddenly just flew open. And I remember when I first came to God, I opened up the Bible. It's the first thing I did. I came home, I opened up the Bible and boom, it came alive. Like nothing. Yeah. I've read the Bhagavad Gita. I've read the Quran. Yeah. But, you know, um, being in the spiritual realm as well. But when I received the spirit of God, it has not changed. It has been constant and it has been truthful. And God's word is incredible because um, when you begin to test it, because when you come from a different spiritual world, there are different spiritual realities, mm -hmm. you can actually look into the word of God and actually test it and see is there truth yeah. in this. And, and that is what I found. I find it to be truthful and I mm -hmm. find it to be the very foundation of my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so for me, the spiritual world is very real. Yeah. And um, I live literally every day <laughs> in the spirit of God and I, and I imbibe in it. And um, yeah, we'll talk on a bit later what the presence feels like. Yeah. But um, that presence of God, I, I think there's no um, comparison to it. Um, um, it. This is another verse which I thought was very interesting. It says, um, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Mm -hmm. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Yeah. And I find this to be true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I think it's, it, you, you have such a conviction because of that as well. Like yeah. you've seen a, a whole other world and, and now understanding and experience the Spirit of God has become so real to you yeah, I mean, that the, you can not be shaken from it. No, I cannot, but because um, some of the rituals that we did was so um, so involved. It involved you physically. Mm -hmm. So there was um, one of the things we did, which was um, in Malaysia, we have this huge temple. It has 272 steps in it. And uh, men and women will go once a year and they will you know, give like a living sacrifice to this God, not like, you know, human sacrifice, but, <laughs> but what they do is um, the men, for example, they will um, hook hooks onto their back. They'll be pierced sometimes by a hundred hooks and it's connected to a chariot 
and they'll pull these hooks, I mean, this chariot, these heavy chariots, up 272 steps. Now, when you see something like that and they don't feel pain yeah. and they don't feel fatigue because they, they chant a mantra all the way up these steps, yeah. you know, so it's real because they can, they've experienced this and they do this for three hours, three to four hours. And once it's over and they unhook um, these men, they just fall on the ground and faint and they, and they, and they break out in cold sweat and they don't remember what had happened, what they've done, but they know they've given something to their God and can make a bow. Wow. So when you see th things like that, you've grown up with things like that, you cannot deny that you are not just, um, you're, you, are, you cannot deny that you are spirit because you, you are not just body and mind. There yeah. is a spiritual side of you yeah. and it's very real. Yeah. But as I said, I chose Jesus because I knew um, that, that love and the truth that I felt mm -hmm. from knowing him. Yeah. Like that spirit, the spiritual presence of God, as I said, like it has not left me. It is constant and it's constantly growing as well, yeah. which is not true for these other spirits that yeah. I've experienced. So beautiful. A bit bold, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and it, it's true because so often I think in the Western world, we can be like not open to the reality of the spirit world. Um, but it's very, very real. Mm. And um, w thank God for the Spirit of God. Thank God. So, yeah. so J Julie, let's go a little bit maybe theology because there are lots of things we talk about. Receiving the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, baptizing the Spirit. Mm -hmm. what, is, what does all this mean and why is it important? Okay, well, let's talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So uh, theologian David Pawson says that uh, one cannot live the full Christian life unless they have received Jesus as Lord uh, that they've been baptized in water and been baptized by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is like when we receive Jesus as Lord, it's like you've been given a Ferrari, like an incredible car full of power mm -hmm. and potential. But without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's like knowing you can drive it in first gear and um, you don't know that there's lights, so you don't drive it at night. So all you can do with this vehicle of immense power is drive it in first gear during the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, in winter here, that's not a lot of hours. So, um, yeah, so uh, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is given to us and um, it fills us with power and passion for to complete the mission that yeah. Jesus uh, began. And we hear in Acts 2, 1 to 4, this is where Jesus said, when he ascended, he said, wait, the Spirit of God, yeah. is, the Spirit is going to come upon you and fill you with power. And that is called Pentecost. And we read it here where it says, um, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. I think what's of note here is that this happened, the first time this happened, it happened uh, as an event of the church. It didn't happen, you know, in a personal you know, one-off experience, you know, for people yeah. individually. And so the primary focus that, uh, that of spirit baptism is actually the unity of the believers. It's the, uh, it's the community of the yeah. believers. It is church. And if you think back to the story of the Tower of Babel, yeah. in the Tower of Babel, God came and he confused people's languages. They did not understand one another and they had to go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. But here God gave them... Um, uh, the gift of tongues, and yeah. they were speaking in languages known to other people, yeah. and there was a unity in the diversity he gave them mm. um, a common gift. And yeah. so that is primary. And I love here that Simon um, Chan says, all too often Pentecostals are more concerned with their personal Pentecost rather than the corporate Pentecostal reality of which each person has a share. And it's really important, you know, we don't want to go after our own personalized Christianity. Church is a vital part. It is a crucial part of being a Christian. But in just very simple language, yeah. when we are converted, yeah. we, receive the whole, we receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So baptism of the Holy Spirit is being immersed mm -hmm. um, in his presence, in his power, in his anointing. Yeah. It is like um, if you uncork, it's like uncorking the Holy Spirit. And if you uncork champagne and it, it flows over, it's just the yeah. overflow mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, of his presence in your life. And baptism of the Holy Spirit is a one-off event, but you can be filled with the Holy Spirit 
over and yeah. over again. And sometimes people treat it like a badge that they must get, but not an ongoing way, you know, an mm -hmm. ongoing type um, of lifestyle. But baptism of the Holy Spirit is always given to us. It fills us with passion and power mm -hmm. for Jesus and for his mission. That's, that's actually what it's all about. And it is also the gateway to all the other gifts yeah. of God. So, so good. good. Yeah, the like gateway. That. And some people would argue that, um, you know, a baptism of the Holy Spirit and conversion are one event. And some people will say, no, they're separate events. But <laughs> we believe, I believe, that they are two separate events, but they can happen simultaneously. Yeah. Mm, now, yes. that, ha that happened for me. Mm. I, I gave my life to Jesus, but immediately I could hear from God, sense his presence in profound ways. I couldn't help but share my faith with everybody. I was begging to be baptized. I didn't want to wait a month to be baptized. I started tithing, you know, so there was a boldness, there was a confidence, there was something, there was a readiness to share my faith. Yeah. I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And actually for me, the reality of speaking in tongues, which we're going to touch on in the next yeah. episode, uh, was a reality that came um, a few months later for me, yeah. but I had been baptized. And speaking of tongues, uh, you know, speaking in tongues is a normal, a normal yeah. occurrence yeah. to being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but it's not normative. There are other signs as Absolutely. well yeah. that you can be baptized yeah. in the Holy Spirit. So good. So Nora, Julie was explaining, you know, there's that a moment where we're converted, we become Christians and mm -hmm. we receive the Spirit of God. Yeah. Then there's the filling, baptism, initially but then constantly refilling and that's just you know talking about living by the spirit this filling day by day yeah. so for you in just everyday life how do you make sure that you're walking by the spirit or filled with the spirit of God well I love what Julie said because we need to know that this has to happen daily and a lot of people think oh no if I'm baptized by the spirit I already got him so why do I need to keep talking to him like he's yeah. already there he knows me why do I need to speak to him? Like yeah. the Bible says that God knows my thoughts, mm. yeah. but actually it, it has to be a conversation. It has to be a relationship. And as you take time to know people more, like when you, for example, went out with your boyfriend in that time and you wanted to know him better, you would take like these dates every once in a while to know each other a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And then the relationship grows and then yeah. you discover something new every single day that makes you fall in love with that person even more. And I find out that with the Holy Spirit, it's exactly the same. So I feel like getting to know the Holy Spirit is what actually is going to help you be filled by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. every single yeah. day. Yeah. And the way that I know him or like the way that I did was through the Bible. Yeah. And there are other ways, like through the Bible, yeah. also by preaching, like learning about him, who yeah. he is, because the Father fulfills another role, the Spirit fulfills another role, and Jesus is another yeah. role. Yeah. Uh, so getting to just focus on him um, in one part of my devotional, for example, helped me a lot. And also talking to other people, like what has been your experience with the Holy Spirit? How did you know him? Like how do, how do you know you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit yeah. and not yes. confusing it? Those things are amazing and those things like flash this fire in you yeah. and you want more and then you're craving more and then you're like, like the natural end or like the natural result is that you want to be filled with more of him. Yeah. And I'm very, very passionate about this topic <laughs> yeah. because I, I honestly, I get nervous whenever I talk about the Holy Spirit, but it's because is very interesting how he moves and for yeah. example right now i know that he's here like when you gave your testimony it's amazing how like the journey that the holy spirit uh, took you through yeah. and as you said like every person has a different journey with the holy spirit yeah in my case i received the holy spirit when i received jesus i know that yeah. for sure and the bible says that yeah but he didn't reveal himself straight away yeah. yeah. Um, he took me into a journey of getting to know him through the Bible, through yeah. talking with other people. And by that, I fell in love with him and I wanted <laughs> even more. Yeah. And I feel like the secret is go and ask for more. And then there is actually a verse that I wanted to share with you is in Luke eleven thirteen, And it says, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Mm. Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then... Though you are evil, know how, how to give good gifts to your, our children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's the secret. Yeah. If you want to be filled by the Holy Spirit more, you want to get to know him more, do you want to feel his power even more, you just have to ask for it. Beautiful. And the Father will never deny it. So I love that. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's, you would never end, yeah. finish, or like finish, like, oh, I already know you. I don't need more. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. There's always something new. There's Absolutely. always something new. And that I'm yeah. so good. So Swan, practically, mom of three, getting yes. out the door, everyone out the door in the morning, very busy, but how do you practically do that? Okay. Um, you know, it's so interesting what you're saying and um, about how the more you get to know him, the better you, you, um, you hear his voice and better it becomes, isn't it? The journey becomes better. But um, equally, though, life still brings its challenges. Yes. Mm. Whether you're... No. you're you know, <laughs> let's be honest. You know, I love how you talked about, um, you know, getting to know your boyfriend. And mm. then, you know... Um, but I also feel like Holy Spirit, the long game is... It's like a marriage. It really is. Um, yeah. it, because okay. there are days where it's so high and, yeah. then, and wonderful. You feel his presence, you know. You're it's <laughs> wonderful. But then there are days where there's... Like, there's no feeling in the room. Yeah. There's a, like... Are you so there? true. God, mm -hmm. you know, or sometimes it's months, especially when things yeah. are very hard. Yeah. It's like, where are you, Lord? Yeah. Why, why aren't you here with me at this moment? Um, and I, you know, and I used to think because I was a bit like you, Julie. Um, when I uh, converted, I immediately got the baptism of the Holy Spirit too. Just couldn't wait to get mm -hmm. in a room with Jesus because it was so incredible. It was like you know your battery being filled up, and then you're like walking on it. Like <laughs> you know, every word of God, like everything's amazing. Yeah. I, you know, I opened the Bible, boom, that's the verse, you know, I've got one for you. And I was just this person, I was just exploding all over the place. Um, but God was, um, I was a baby then, I was a baby Christian, and yeah. God was teaching me what it feels like, what he is like, what his nature is like. He was carrying me through infanthood, as, yeah. as, you, as you say. Yeah. But as you get older, you no longer drink milk, you eat meat. So yeah. um, you, you have to learn to nourish yourself, cook your meal, yeah. and, and, and nourish yourself. Yeah. So as you get older, God is not far away. He said he'll never ever leave you nor forsake yeah. you. But equally, he's teaching you um, how to walk with him in maturity. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like any relationship, you need to uh, nurture it. Mm -hmm. You need to dwell in it. Mm -hmm. And then um, you also need to be purposeful about it. Um, so, you know, you, I, I think in my heart of hearts now, I know how I want my spiritual life to look. I know God always has a different plan, but I have a plan in my head. Like, God, I know where I want to be with you. I know the hope of Gloria that I'm hoping yeah. for. I know the words I want to hear you say when I meet you one day. Mm -hmm. and, and how I do that practically is um, very simple. Um, is daily reading. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to say this also, right, as in the long game. Mm. Sometimes you read the word of God. I got nothing. Oh, that's that's lovely. I've read it a hundred <laughs> times. Thank you, Jesus. But as I mull over it um, in the day, it begins to bud, grow into something amazing. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's what the word of God does. Like it just, it's alive. Um, and it's spirit and it goes and it finishes the job that it's meant to do. In and also life. something you read maybe one day, it might not be for that day, but you, mm -hmm. it's, right? it comes 100%. up later on, Absolutely. like a week later or a month later. And it's like the Holy Spirit. One of the things is that it brings to remembrance things. That's right. And so you never know that what you're putting in today might actually be for another day. That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. true. And sometimes it's an encouragement for a friend, actually. Yeah. Or it's your mum calling you up saying, oh, say, hey, wait a minute, I just read this verse. I've got nothing, but it's obviously for you. Yeah. And that's how the Spirit of God works. We, yeah. we work in community, right? So that's, that's yeah. yeah. Second thing is prayer. It's very much um, a part of my life. Um, I'm raising three children, um, it, it's intense. And I know, I remember the days when I didn't have kids and I had that one hour quiet time with Jesus <laughs> and I'll write stuff down. But I remember the days when they were breast, when I was breastfeeding or um, feeding, weaning a child at the same time. And because, yeah. so, you know, my kids are all close together in age. Um, I just remember, God, I can't give you that time. I have no time. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but, uh, but God says, give me your five minutes. Just yeah. give me anything. I will do great things with that. Yeah. And so I began to pray just quite practically at my sink, washing my dishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just That's literally, oh, I'm carrying my child. I said, God, thank you for my child. Thank yeah. you. But in those prayer moments, God... Um, God is amazing. He is faithful and he answers prayer and he has answered my prayer yeah. time and time again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, all those verses that brought you nothing, that were all brought to remembrance yeah, in, that, in those moments where I could not do that quiet time with God. Yeah. So it is a long game. So I love that you talked about 
that there can be times where it does feel dry, that it doesn't always feel like this exciting, I've got this word and you're like on cloud nine because there might be girls watching on who you're going through things and you're crying out to God and you're needing answers and maybe it's just like nothing. And I think there are, even in the Bible, you see psalmist and so many people are like, God, where are you? Like that, it's, it's part of our Christian walk. And I, and I think that's part of maturity of learning. Mm. How, how do you navigate these seasons? And, and, and sometimes I truly believe that in those times, God's like drawing us deeper. It's yeah. like, come find me. Cause when you seek me, exactly. you do find me. And, and it is just like push deeper, go further. There's something more and something newer. And if we do stay surface level and it's, it's easy, you know, the easy things to find, sometimes he's trying to teach us other lessons we can't find mm. when it's just in that way. Um, and so don't give up is what yeah. I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Julie, um, just really quickly, when it comes to being filled with the Spirit, there's actually a lot of, yes, empowered, equipped, having passion, all of these things, but there's theologically some really important purposes why god has sent the spirit to fill us yeah Uh, yeah absolutely yeah i mean uh, the the first would be that he is the one who does the work of conviction and um, of our conversion yeah he is behind every single salvation story we think we choose him but actually he draws us uh you know to himself um so it's it's his work that happens within us when we uh when we give our lives to him the indwelling and the assurance. So when we give our lives to the Lord, he indwells us, but also he gives us that assurance. Like you were saying earlier, I know that I know, I know that I know that he's my beloved, I am his. So it's that kind of assurance. The empowerment, we've spoken about the empowerment, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where we're given passion and power for Jesus and his purposes. And it's primarily for service and for evangelism. It does say Mm. in Acts 1, the power of God will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Um, Another one is sanctification. Sanctification means becoming like Jesus, Mm. growing in uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Um, it's it's becoming holy, and that's less about like sitting on a mountaintop in solitude, yeah. and more about you know, am I kind to you? Mm. You know, when you're a difficult person, are oh, you a difficult person? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, am I am I uh, you know, can I show kindness? Am I growing in the fruits of the spirit? Yeah. And then um, glorification, and glorification is when we are promoted to heaven. Then um, his final work there is that we our bodies are converted what into he starts yeah, complete. he's exactly yes. precisely. But the Holy Spirit is our counsellor on this journey um, of life. He produces that fruit in life. He gives us passion for his mission. He helps us become um, united um, as a church and and gives us love, real love, one for another. I think what's really important uh, to mention here, and I feel passionate about this, is that if we want to experience the power and the presence of God in our lives, it does require being... um, obedient Mm. and not just like did God say that you know slowly obedient but actually prompt obedience if we want to see um, the power of God in our lives so when God shows you something or gives you something and it's like it looks impossible or it's completely out of my comfort zone or what what are you what are you what are you doing here God I don't understand it is actually not leaning on my own understanding but choosing to step out and actually the way that we respond Mm. when God speaks to us shows what we really believe about God regardless of what we say and I know for myself there were many times that I knew I would say yes because there were times I didn't say yes in my earlier but I knew it's a yes but I would delay but what was that about it you know I was leaning on my own understanding I was trying to be in control and I, I do remember Many years ago, I was speaking at a women's conference. It, it, the church was a little bit different to the way we operated. Yeah. On the opening night, the pastor invited anybody, come forward if you have a word for this or anything like this for the conference. And uh, I had a picture of a bride. That's it. Just a bride. It wouldn't leave my head. I, this was kind of new to me. So I'm like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. Don't even know. Dismiss it. Bride, bride, bride. Anyway, the moment passes and I don't say anything. And the speaker gets up and the theme of the conference and what she opens the the night with is that we are the bride of Christ. And what I did was I robbed her of just saying, you are so on point with God. I robbed the conference, the people Mm. of going, oh my gosh, God is about to speak to us. And I got robbed of being that channel. Mm. So it was a wonderful Mm. learning experience. So to experience the uh, the power and the presence of uh, God is prompt obedience. Amazing, Mm. love that. Okay, so we're gonna finish up on part one. Just quickly, Nora. For you, can you maybe just give an example of what living in the spirit, an, an example of in your life, what that's done? 
Uh, well, as you know, my first language is Spanish. Mm -hmm. So living by the spirit has helped me just overcome that challenge mm -hmm. because when you're speaking in your own language, sometimes you say words without thinking about them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can say things that you shouldn't say. But uh, now that I have, I'm speaking in English, I have to be a bit more aware mm -hmm. um, of what I'm trying to say of the message that I want to come across. Yeah. And then that has made me depend way more in the Holy Spirit because I have to ask him, how do I say this, God? How, mm -hmm. how, do, how do I touch this, peop this person's heart without you know, like calling out maybe things that they need to change, yeah. but without hurting them and letting them know that I love them. Yeah. Either, either it's, if it's my husband or someone else that I'm related um, with, or like in my everyday, how do I, how do I speak to people, God? Like, how do I show love? Mm. How do I show mercy? How do I show grace? Um, and how am I wise? Like even leading, um, you need to be very careful not to share your own like only your emotions mm. yeah because Absolutely. you can be very emotional but actually give words that will lift people up and that will yeah. bring life to people so, so what i know and what i've seen is whenever i try to say my own words yeah. it doesn't work maybe people will be encouraged but it doesn't last long yeah but when you speak the words of god that the holy spirit reminded you of or when you speak that image or that feeling that the holy spirit gave you yeah. then something come like something happens in people's yeah. lives it's for um, and it brings life mm -hmm. and it brings change yeah. so that's how i've been seeing the holy spirit so good yeah. so love good. that mm -hmm. okay so that is the end of part one our conversation but please 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 join us for part two because we're going to continue to unpack this i hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon